Hi, everyone. I'm David Drujanski. I'm an engineering manager on Bedrock. This is kind of a meta demo. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting um, about the value of dog fooding and have a group exercise uh, for the second half. Uh, but the goal here is to really explain what dog fooding is, uh, um, why it's valuable, how to do it. Um, it may not always be as straightforward on some of the different teams here at Protocol Labs, and then how we do it on Bedrock specifically. Um, and hopefully at the end of this, you'll understand the, the value of dog fooding and think about ways of how to apply it to your team. So with that, what is dog fooding? Uh, so a dog fooding is the process of regularly using your product, um, otherwise known as eating your own dog food and experiencing it as a real user. Um, and I, I put product here because it doesn't just have to be software. People have done this for hardware products, for physical objects. Um, and, but obviously at protocol apps, we focus on the software. So we'll, uh, lean into those types of examples. So why is this valuable? Um, really the goal here is to build user empathy. And by that, um, by doing that, we can actually build a better product and you'll actually be quite surprised by the number of insights that you learn about and realize as you step into the role of a user, taking off that developer hat, that engineering hat, and just using the product, uh, you'll start to see it in a different way. And uh, we found that um, at least within Bedrock and historically, like you dog food, you'll figure out, hey, this bug is really annoying. Uh, I should fix it right away. Or um, you'll just have a better understanding of the overall product itself. Oh, this is what this feature does. This is why it's useful. Um, on Bedrock, we have a bunch of different teams um, working on different areas of the tech stack. And so by having different uh, dog fooding tasks, we actually get exposure to other parts of the system and learn how uh, that part of uh, the code base works. Uh, so it also gives a lot of technical um, kind of like knowledge sharing by just using different parts of the system, it gets you more familiar with it. Um, but ultimately it increases what I call the, the feedback loop of this development cycle of just iterating on using the product regularly, getting feedback regularly, you're gonna improve it that much faster. How do you actually dog food? Uh, so the ideal way is to use a piece of software on a regular basis. Um, now, uh, the prime example and what really got dog fooding popular was uh, Google. Um, they use this in almost all of their software products. Uh, and you can imagine for their search product, their, their biggest one, right? Like you use search every day. If you don't come up with the result that you're looking for, uh, you send that off to the team and they make improvements. And the key here is like you have a list of users that's willing to uh, to deal with bugs and to deal with like not yet production grade software so that you get that feedback uh, regularly. Maybe my favorite example is uh, from Apple. Uh, so like when they were uh, designing the iPhone, what they actually did, the design team uh, for their version of dog fooding, they actually carved blocks of wood and would carry it in their pocket uh, to simulate the experience of having a device with you at all times and like build a better product that way. That's maybe an extreme version of dog booting on the design side, but it shows that you, know, you don't even have to have a fully functioning product to be actually uh, tested out and see what it actually is like to experience that product itself. So that's the ideal, like you could use a product every day. Now at uh, PL, um, not all of our products, um, at least not yet are used every day. And so how do we kind of like simulate that experience or get that uh, feedback uh, sooner? Uh, so on Bedrock, what we do is we actually have a team rotation. Uh, so we have three teams on Bedrock. One team every for every team meeting will create a task that everyone has to complete ahead of time. Uh, and that task is time boxed to 10 minutes and everyone on the team, it doesn't matter if you're an engineer or a product manager, will attempt to complete that task. And then at that meeting, we'll come, we'll discuss how it went. Uh, uh, we'll generate all the feedback, collect it, and the team can use that going forward to improve their product. Now, the keys here are that the tasks are simple, uh, both for creating them um, and also for attempting them um, so that anyone can do it. Again, it doesn't matter if you're an engineer and you know how the code works or you just want to use it uh, as a TPM, for example. Um, it has to be easy to provide feedback. And maybe the most important thing here is that failure is okay. And what do I mean by that is like, if the user can't finish the task, uh, th 
that is a problem not with the user but with the software most likely and so like getting at that mindset like we expect this to fail and it's okay if it fails that's really valuable feedback for the team that means it wasn't easy enough or the software was not good enough uh, to perform that task uh, from the user uh, and so that's actually expected and that's uh, i think a good mindset to have when you're dog fooding th these uh, versions of software as we develop them uh, live uh, so this is kind of like a visual map of how that works again we have three teams on, on bedrock we rotate them one team will create a task everyone on the team spends 10 minutes sometime throughout the week and then uh, they try to complete that task we talk in the meeting how it went we provide that feedback to the team and then it rotates so that's kind of how we do it okay so we're going to try a really quick group exercise here um, on the right is a template that we use on bedrock for like creating a task uh, so you you know you name the task this is actually a copy of the latest uh, dog fooding task we did on the team uh, uh, you know, the demo day edition, uh, you know, when do we want people to complete it by who made it? Um, and then the task details, and you can see that these are pretty straightforward, simple details. Um, you know, again, 10 minutes, uh, but the goal here, just to run through it, uh, we're going to use this product that we've built on bedrock, the tornado team, it's called Lassie. Uh, it, its goal as a product is that you give it a CID and it gets the content. And the key distinguishing factor is like, it doesn't matter if it's on a Filecoin node or an IPFS node, it'll just do its best uh, to find that uh, content. And we're gonna run the, the HTTP server uh, from Lassie um, so that we can um, test out the HTTP API there and making sure that we can get content like we would any other HTTP server. And this is actually used in the Rhea project with Saturn. So uh, that's why we dog fooded it earlier. Uh, and then I've also listed uh, a few CIDs here uh, and that we're going to try getting those specific CIDs and see how it goes. Now, because of time, I'm probably just going to run through this really quickly. Uh, but essentially, uh, I'll go and install the latest version of Lassie. I already have it installed, so you're not going to see anything, but um, no new downloads, but it's there. And then we're going to just run the server. So again, I'm going to run in the top left corner here. Okay, the server is up. Awesome. It's on port 50, 50, 50. And now I'm going to attempt to get a CID. Uh, so this is a template. So I'm gonna copy one of the CIDs from below. And I'm gonna give it a name. So it's easy, let's call it CID1. And Lassie outputs everything in a car file format. So I'm going to run that. Now, the cool thing you could see from the HTTP server, the logs of how it requested, what provider it's actually getting it from, uh, which is pretty cool. And, uh, and just because we're here and, I, and to make it a better demo, I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. OK, this one, a little bit more interesting. Um, it looked at a few more providers. Uh, you can like read through the logs if you're interested uh, and it tells you the overall duration. If I look at my directory, I have two. Now the next step in the demo, uh, sorry, in the dog food task, is to then view the file. So I'm gonna go ahead and just view the car file. So I'm gonna try uh, bid one. Okay, that's kind of like a blob, interesting. And then uh, I'm going to look at the second one as well. Uh, oops. Okay, that one actually is a text file. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to parse. Um, I don't have time right now, but the first one is actually like a PNG image on IPFS. This one is uh, an XML feed for a blog. Um, but that's it. Uh, so then afterwards, I could leave feedback um, below. This is how we do like some lightweight feedback. And then ultimately the team would then, either the user or the team could file these as GitHub issues. Um, and then we can like kind of start to prioritize them in the backlog after talking about it. And here's something that, um, you know, some example feedback of what I wrote previously. Uh, and you can see what the other team has wrote. Like Jacob actually figured out how to open that, um, that blob uh, more easily. Um, and it's basically requires some like car expertise, um, the Go car library to use it.
Um, so yeah, that's kind of an example uh, of how we dog food. Uh, let me just, uh, I think that's about it. I think the only other thing is, uh, again, think of how you can dog food um, on your team. It, it doesn't have to be every day, but if you can do something like a rotation, um, I think it'll bring a lot of value to uh, the software you build and happy to help you do that as well. If you're stuck or you're not sure, quite sure how to set it up, um, feel free to use our templates that are linked on the presentation. And uh, we can also jump into a chat sometime and um, I can help out or anyone on the team as well. Uh, so thanks.